and welcome back to another video on installing mods for the server. To get started, you will need to watch my previous video, or at least on my previous video, part 1, at 11 minutes and 11 seconds, I believe. Right around there, or right before there, you can look and you'll see the list of all the mods and client and server mods that I am using. The next thing you want to do is go to minecraft.net and I already had it pulled up there for a second. Then you on the right side you'll see a download and then you're going to get the minecraft server.jar right click on it, save target as, change this to all top file types and then save it as a jar file. Save that to the desktop or wherever. Take that file that you just downloaded copy it because if you mess up you'll have a fresh copy of it so don't don't move it copy it or else you're gonna have to go back to minecraft.net and download a new one the next part is is it's it's a little there's multiple ways that you can go about doing this uh, there's different ways you can launch the server uh, I found that it's most uh, well it's easiest just to use a, a bat file and to make a ba a dot that file or .bat it doesn't really matter. Right click and then new text document and name it run. You can see I already have one down here. I made that one a little while ago. And then just name it whatever. Open it again and just type whatever in it just to just to make sure there's something in it. Save that, put that to all file and then type BAT at the end. Save that and it'll save a new file which you can delete this one right here. It'll create a run.batch file and the code that you can put in there is right here. This will make it start up and run the server with a command prompt. One of these windows, oh nope wrong one. It'll make it start up with one of these windows right here. So, to do that, you put this code right here. Oops. Yeah. Put that in here. And then that'll run the server that you downloaded. Now, if it does not work, there's many, many, many different ways you can launch this. Um, sometimes you're gonna have to uh, actually link it to the actual place that you installed Java and the most typical place would be in your C drive under program files and it'll be under Java and then JRE6 or JRE7 if you have the new one and you link it to that place and it'll work but most times I've found that this will pretty much work so after you have that, double click on that, and that'll start up the server. And there you go, that's what a server looks like when it's running on a pretty much a local machine. The easiest way to connect to a server would be going to Google, going to what is my IP, just type that in, and then the first result, it'll tell you what your IP is that everyone else can put into the multiplayer uh, option in uh, Minecraft client and they'll be able to connect. That's the easiest way. Generally, it usually doesn't work unless you specifically have to forward a port or uh, sometimes it could work I mean sometimes it could work with not having to do anything. It's just all random luck. But the method that we use would be Hamachi, as you can see right here. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You go to just go to Google, type in Hamachi and then when you get to it, there's a couple different types of Hamachi. If you get the unmanaged version, install that, and you can create a room on there and have someone else join the room, and it'll bypass everything. It'll just create a direct tunnel between you two. And if you want more than two people, you can set up the room for, I don't even know the max, a uh, whole bunch of people can connect to Hamachi and easily get in your server. The only limiting factor is how many how many people your server can hold or putting it more straightforward how how good your computer actually is at running a server 
I mean, I guarantee I won't have any problem hosting a server with like 15, 20 people easily, but some people uh, kind of struggle with only, you know, two or three people on their server. Now that you have the server up, um, it would be a good time. Well, you, you can test it if you want. It's You can connect to your own IP if you have your own internal IP address uh, that you should have on your on your modem or router or whatever. But assuming that it works, it should work, there's no reason it shouldn't, you can close out of the server, close out of the run, and then you should have two windows open, the actual server, and then you should have the mods on the other side. Make this easier. Like this. First thing you want to do is Minecraft Forge is going to go in the server jar. You're not going to have mod loader in the server as mod loader is only client based. So same way you do with the other one. WinZip or 7zip, it doesn't really matter. Open with WinZip. And then where is Forge right here? Go here, copy everything, drag it over. You'll see that there's a meta inf in the Minecraft server. Leave that alone. Do not mess with that. If you delete it, it'll corrupt the jar and you're gonna have to start all over. Now that the basic the basic one is in here. The basic uh you know mod loader uh, mod uh, what am I saying? Ma Minecraft Forge. You can exit out of the jar, bring this down, click run, and you notice it created two new folders in here. One in the mods and the one for the config. Config you just you can use it's the same thing as a client, it's basically the same thing. After it's done, you go ahead and close out the server. Then go to, I believe, back in the actual uh, jar. You didn't really need to close it out, but it doesn't really matter. I don't like having the jar open when the server's running. Then, where is it? Not enough items. And chicken code core server go inside the jar. So take this over here. Drag that right in here. That's chicken code core. And then, where is it? Not enough items. Drag that right in here. Now that that's in there, you can go ahead and close out of the jar. You don't need the jar anymore. Um, the rest of them, it's pretty much just drag and drop. There's really nothing more to it. You can go one at a time. You can go like do build craft, start up the server. If it works, good. You can go on to the next one. It, it helps with uh, trimming out what the problem is. If, uh, if the server doesn't work, you can narrow it down to, oh, uh, I added this mod. It's got to be something with that mod conflicting with something else. Otherwise, if it loads up and it loads correctly, you're, you're pretty much good. You can just keep going. But usually what I like to do is load the four big mods in there because... I've never had a problem with any of them. Industrial craft, red power, build craft, and equivalent exchange. And you can go back to the server, go to run, and now it's loading up all the mods into the server. Right there, and you can see the world, the core, up here, pretty sure, uh, unless they, unless it's something different, you can usually see when it loads. Yeah, there's industrial craft, uh, build craft, uh, they're all in there, basically. Uh, the first thing I want to do, usually, well, you can usually do that later, but since that works, there's no problems with that. You can go ahead and drag forestry or not drag copy and railcraft and oops additional pipes drag that right in there so now you should have you have a server 
that started correctly. At this point, it, the server started correctly. You only had four of the mods in there, plus not enough items, and the chicken code core in the jar, plus the Minecraft forge in the jar. Um, it's probably going to spaz out as soon as I start the server, because the item IDs are conflicting with my the last video, if you saw. Yep. Server just spazzed out. Because block ID 255 occupied by a forestry item. So let's go and fix. Now this next method I'm going to use is experimental. I've never done this before. But if you see this part in the actual final video, um, it works. So I'm going to try... Well, first before I get to this, I was looking at the block IDs and forestry was set to 255. I looked at my client version and like a piece of red power, like a red power block was at the 255. So it's if you, if you start this up on the client and you have the server with the block IDs totally different, it's going to they're not going to they're basically not going to cooperate and it's going to fail. The server will start, the client will start, but once you connect, you'll get an error on join. I've spent many hours figuring that out way back. So the experimental way is just going into the config files in your Minecraft, dot Minecraft and copying them straight to your server directory. So um, I like to go right down the list. So at buildcraft, buildcraft, config, config. Uh, I don't know where the other one is. Additional pipes. Oh, because it didn't load all the way. That's right. It'll be there. So you go to buildcraft config. And you go here. And then you go copy. And then you go copy and replace. Then you go to config. Then for forestry. Block ID. I'll compare. I'll do a little comparison right here. Look at those block IDs. They don't. They don't. Uh, yeah, they don't quite match, do they? They're almost, but yeah, the mill, the machine, the sapling, the beehive. Yeah, they're well, not the beehive. The the engine. Yeah, they're not completely uh, in sync. So this will fix that completely. Copy and paste. Go back to config. Start go to railcraft. Railcraft. Copy and replace. Going down. See industrial craft right here. Copy. Paste. Going down the list again. Don't think this is the config file. Didn't think so. The rest should be good. And you go back to the server, and then you go back to dot .minecraft, and you should see this. Going down the list, you got red power, that's next. Red power. Copy this into the server. Then, <clears throat> they don't need to worry about anything in the resources. The saves, the stats, the texture packs, those are all good. The mod ee.props. Copy and paste. Now, if it were, if all uh, if it all works, it should start up. It might give another error because Buildcraft uh, subdirect sub add-on did not load. And it looks like it's loading just fine. So this experimental method works. I didn't know if that was it was that easy. You close out of that. Go to buildcraft config, buildcraft config, and there's additional pipes. I don't know if there's any difference, but just copy, paste. So, if you were counting, you should have had, raise minimap doesn't count, so you should have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times that you copied back and forth. So if you don't, if you didn't copy seven things from your client or your server, you did something wrong. So just go back in the video and just re-watch it. 
Um, it was pretty simple. I, I did this in my first try, so pretty simple and straightforward. Um, you can close out of the client on the server. You can go back to the beginning. On the mods section, uh, the, the collection of mods, you can get rid of that. Get rid of Hamachi here. The only thing you should have up is your list of your actual server. Now hopefully if you did everything right, this should be this next process should be very smooth. You open up your uh, run, double click on your run, the server will load. But first, before you do that, you might want to go to your world. Then just delete the world. This will generate a new server. Or not a new server, what I was saying. Um, a new world with all the actual mods in it. See, I'll take it a little longer now. See, there it is. Oops, what did I just do? Alright, drag that over here. Open up your Minecraft. Drag this to the left. It's freezing up a little. Oh, there it goes. Have the Hamachi open or have the actual server the server address. Uh, we use Hamachi. It's the easiest way. Dot two four zero dot two oh four done and should have a little green light right here. Twenty five MS ping. Join the server. And you can see on the right there a bunch of uh, a bunch of words and whatnot just loaded in there. Now of course for uh, for our world we're gonna have to do a little bit of tweaking. I don't know how many of the block IDs changed. I'm going to have to do a lot of work converting our world to 1.2.5. It shouldn't take that long, but if you're converting an old world, it takes a while. It, it's not instant, but if you're creating a new world, a uh, new server, it's pretty smooth. If you followed this video and the previous video, um, it should be pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty simple, and hopefully pretty smooth. Well, that's about it for this one. Um, this completes video two of installing a mod or installing mods to a server. Um, if you enjoyed this video and found it of any uh, help, make sure you rate, comment, uh, subscribe, and I will see you later.